So, how not to lose heart. This is, this is getting to some of the important stuff. Um, one of the questions for you and for those people you might converse with is how can we face the disappointment of a Christian leader or Christian parent failing without losing heart, without giving up, without being, uh, giving into despair? We've already touched on some of these, but I want to talk some. Acknowledge your own capacity to blow it. It says in Matthew chapter 7, uh, when Jesus is talking to his followers, he said, before you, before you focus on the speck in your brother's eye, look at what? The log in your own eye. In other words, before you point out how that person messed up, look in your own heart, look in your own mind. What are your attitudes? What are your actions? How faultless are you in dealing with this? It's a good question. Are those statistics true because pastors are doing something wrong or because they're doing something right? And my hunch is it is, it is a mixed bag. I think the position that we have, it has pressures that sometimes pastors assume that they need to follow when the Bible doesn't really say I need to be that perfect. And then sometimes we as people in the church, we want our pastor, we might say we want you to be transparent and be real, but there's some security I have in knowing that you're following God. And that you're closer to God than I am. So. How are those collected? Is that like from a specific denomination or location? Or? Those were um, Fuller Institute had some of those, George Barna and Pastoral Care Incorporated. So those were three specific surveys that you can find online. So acknowledge your capacity to blow it is one of the things that we need to do to not lose heart. Uh, Honestly assess the sin and its impact without launching a full investigation and wanting to know everything about what went down. Um, what happened? How did it impact you? How are you going to label it correctly? If your youth pastor was caught taking money from the youth group fund for his personal youth use, how does that impact you? Are you disappointed? Are you discouraged? Are you losing your faith? Was part of that money the money you gave to go to camp this year and now it's gone, so you're really mad? I mean, how, how is it impacting you? You need to be honest about that so you know how to reconcile, which is what we're going to get to in a few minutes. Talk to trusted friends. You need to talk to trusted friends, to, to leaders who you can trust, who are guiding you. In, in, and trust is one of the things that gets broken down in this area, so it's really hard even to say that, but we need to talk to people in a way that honors God. Evaluate your own heart for judgmental, punitive, or critical attitudes. Remember how I said earlier, you're not responsible for what happens to you, but you are responsible for what you do in, in, as a result. So every time I see someone mess up or they hurt me, what I need to do is I need to say, okay, Lord, what's, what's critical in my heart and mind? What's more punitive? How am I being more punitive towards my dad than you are, towards my mom than you are, towards my pastor than you are? Learn something. Decide how you want to live differently. We ought to learn a lesson from every newspaper article, every headline, when we hear pastor messes up here, parents messed up here and ended up going to jail. We ought to learn something because in my heart is the seed of that very thing. If it wasn't for the grace and the love of God, you know, I could be that bad. I could do that. I could be that kind of person. So learn something, and then embrace Jesus as the source of stability and redemption. Jesus is the source. Your pastor was never meant to be your God. Your parents were never meant to be your God. God was meant to be your God, and he sent his son Jesus to help us to have that relationship with God through him. So that's how we embrace that. 